I'm Cairo 7, Pinpoint Meteorologist Nick Allard. Traffic and weather brought to you by Emerald Queen Casino, welcoming Wayne Brady's It's My Line Tour May 11th. A night of improv and fun with Wayne Brady from Whose Line Is It Anyway? At the Emerald Queen Casino, the entertainment capital of the Northwest. It is 55 degrees in downtown Seattle. I'm Jillian Raftery. From Marysville to Magnolia, this is Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. News and talk powered by the Pacific Northwest. The big lead is brought to you by 3010 Weight Loss for Life. The Dory Monson Show on Cairo Radio. This is the big lead. Coming to you from the Carter Subaru studio and also streaming on Facebook Live for the big lead at two. Welcome to our top stories this hour. Okay, before I get to all the local stuff, I have a little more. Uh, uh, maybe I should save this for Awesome Audio. Should I save the Chris Matthews for Awesome Audio? Uh, we make the sure. top three? It's one of the top three of the it's day. pretty good. Okay, I'll save the Chris Matthews. Should I save the MAGA hat kid for Awesome no. Audio? No, because I just get it over with. I okay. don't want to bring it back on Friday. <laughs> Well, it's, it might be one of the best of the week, though. I don't so. Think so. on a college campus down in Texas, a, a guy was wearing a MAGA hat. And, oh, that triggers the fragile left. So they uh, – <laughs> it's, it's so funny because the police had to be called because one of the women there knocked it off his head. Uh, this is Texas State University. Someone offers a lawyer to the person who knocked the hat off the MAGA guy's head. Hey, I have the name for my lawyer. Ray has the name for my lawyer. Maya? Ray has, or sorry, Journey has, Journey has the name for my lawyer. Okay. Okay, so the, the woman who knocked it off, she's being arrested for assault. And then some other woman... I'll give you the name of my lawyer. I'll give you the name of my lawyer. But then the woman who's being arrested for knocking the hat off, she started screaming. I'm going to start using this phrase all the time with uh, nonsensical texters to the show. She wants to know what she's being charged with. So she's just screaming, articulate it! Articulate it! That's going to be my new rallying cry for all the all the emails and text messages I get that just don't make any sense. Articulate it! I can't believe we're not saving this for awesome audio now. This is definite. This might be the best of the day. Eh. Articulate it. <laughs> uh, and then uh, when she's being arrested, they some, make me nervous. So many bleeps. I know. It makes me nervous. Some, some. There's something going on with her hair too. No, 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 not here. No, don't back up. Don't Again, this is all because somebody was wearing a MAGA hat. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, I mean, I all the time. I'm driving down the street. I see bumper stickers for Bernie Sanders, for Obama. Feel the burn. Uh, you know what I do? I look at it. I go. Eh. A person's a Obama supporter. A person's a Bernie supporter. I keep on driving. <laughs> These people, they see someone wearing a hat that's associated with our current president, and they go berserk. They have to get hauled off to jail. They're so crazed. Articulate it! Articulate it! Okay, with that as mere prelude, let's get right into The Big Lead. The Big Lead, Dory Monson Show exclusive. I got an email from a listener, bewildered in Tacoma. Here's what she writes. I'm just curious if you have to deal with this as well. 
Hi, Dory. I love listening to your show, although I'm a teacher, so I only catch the tail end of your show when school is in session. I thought of you tonight on my way out of the gym, not because I was wondering what kind of workouts you do, but because I had an interesting event happen and figured you'd know the answer to my question. I recently joined a, and she describes the gym, but I'm not going to name the gym. Tonight, my friend and I, both of us female, went into the locker room to use the bathroom before we left. As I walked away from the sink, a person who was walking out of the shower stall almost ran right into me. In a very deep voice, this person said, oh, sorry, and kept walking very fast out of the locker room. My friend and I both turned to each other and said, was that a dude? We hurried out of the locker room and followed this person as they walked right out of the gym. I stopped at the front desk and said, that guy just walked out of the shower in the women's locker room. I'm going to give you one guess what the employee told me. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's actually a woman. As I sat there stunned like a deer caught in headlights, I looked at my friend and looked back at the employee and asked, how do you know? The employee went on to explain that this particular member of this gym identifies as a female, so they have to follow Washington state law that says a person can use any locker room that they identify with. So I said, what you're telling me is that any man who is a member of your gym who says they identify as a woman can use the women's locker room? And the employee said, yes, that's the law. My friend and I left and watched as this woman, in quotation marks, walked across the street and got into a beat-up old van and drove off. Now keep in mind, this is off 72nd Street in Tacoma. We have a huge homeless problem down here. My friend said he's probably homeless and was using the shower, which is a whole separate email, LOL. As I drove home, I got more and more irritated about it, that no one informed me when I joined this gym that I might in fact see a man in the locker room? What about my safety? No one informed me that there was a secure one-stall unisex bathroom in the back that I could ask to use. It's apparently locked at all times. Instead of going into the locker room, what about my rights as a woman? If the sign says women's locker room, shouldn't it be for those of us who are in fact female? If you're transitioning, at what point are you the other gender? I want to be supportive, but at the same time, who is supporting me? Am I safe going to a gym knowing that men will be in the locker room? I'm confused and want to know, Dory, if the law really states that just because someone says they are female, they have to be allowed to use the women's locker room. Maybe this is old news and I'm just now finding out. And it's signed, Bewildered in Tacoma. It's not a law. It is the Human Rights Commission, which does have the power to fine entities that don't follow their rules and regulations. Now, now this particular rule, it was pushed through by this unelected Human Rights Commission in our state between Christmas and New Year's a couple of years ago. They did it for the same reason that when you have some news you want to bury Uh, On a regular weekly basis, it's called the Friday afternoon news dump, when hopefully people will forget about it over the weekend. Well, they passed this rule between Christmas and New Year's. I always take that week off. Uh, A lot of people in, uh, although I don't know if anybody else in talk radio would talk about it besides me. I'm sure there's a few. But that's a time when you can sneak things past. We're all either traveling or consumed with visitors, families, you know, our holiday schedules. We don't consume much news that time of the year. And so it was snuck through between Christmas and New Year's a couple of years ago. Now, you may remember, the reason I know all this is because just a couple months after it was snuck through, there was a man in a at a local swimming pool where a 
girls swim team was in the locker room the women's locker room and a man was in there with them and parents were deeply upset that what appeared to be just a pervy male was in a locker room with their you know 10 11 12 year old girls and the people who worked at the pool government employees they they said yeah, if he says he's a woman, then he's a woman. And so it is an incredible convoluted rule. And I feel bad that these businesses have to actually enable the insanity of the left in our state. Now, if somebody's really transitioning, that's one thing. But if it's some homeless guy who gets his kicks by showering in the women's locker room at a local gym, that should not be tolerated. Now, the the tough part is, in not tolerating that guy, you're going to have him go screaming to the Human Rights Commission, and they will find the entity that tries to kick him out. And so, to answer your question, bewildered, in Tacoma. I wish I had a better answer for you. Nobody is looking out for your rights, except for me. Nobody in government is. Uh, it's like the story we had a couple weeks ago, where there was a, a high school boy in a girl's locker room at the high school. And the girls said, what about us? Everybody says we have to make him feel comfortable because he identifies as a girl. But they said, what about us being comfortable? He has male genitalia, and he's in the the girls' locker room with us. Nobody is looking out for the people who are not just uncomfortable, but, I mean, especially in this Me Too era, I would think the radical left would have some care about girls and women who don't want to have a biological man in the locker room with them. But no, in the hierarchy of what the radical left cares about, straight girls and women who don't want to be next to biological men, you are very low on the totem pole of caring among the left. So that's your answer, bewildered. I'll keep watching out for people like you, but in government, you uh, you are the wrong gender and sexuality to be cared about by anyone in government. And that's the sorry reality of things around here right now. Up next in The Big Lead. The Big Lead, Big Local. Now we have this bizarre story. My colleague uh, Jason Rance... He's going to talk uh, in, you'll hear the full interview with King County Sheriff Mitzi Johanknik on his show this afternoon on 770 KTTH. But this is unbelievable. The King County prosecutor, Dan Satterberg, has confirmed that if somebody resists arrest and assaults a police officer while resisting arrest, The prosecutor says he will not prosecute that person for assault. In an email statement, the prosecuting attorney's office said they will only charge assault in the third degree if the assault injures the police officer. That if it's just them resisting arrest, they can get off scot-free for that. So what does that mean? For our prosecutor, Dan Satterberg, it means he is encouraging people to resist arrest. If you have no downside, if you have no legal consequence for resisting arrest, why wouldn't everybody resist arrest? Mitzi Johanknik is the King County Sheriff, and she told Jason that, you know, the only time we have to go hands-on is out of extreme necessity. We go out of our way in training to try to avoid physical contact with people and have a variety of tools. There are just times when you have to place your hands on people. And this all stemmed from there was a cop who had to battle 
a resisting arrest person. Uh, it went to Satterberg's office April 3rd, and on April 5th, Satterberg said, no, we're not going to charge. And the spokesperson for Satterberg said, certainly the suspect's mental state did not diminish the pain the officer involved experienced as a result of her actions, but it does affect our ability to prove an intentional assault. And, and the sheriff said, yeah, there are a lot of mentally ill people out there, and we want to help them, but we can't let them assault cops. We deal with these more and more every yeah. day, and so more and more deputies are put at risk. I think there's dialogue to be had with the prosecutor's office about revisiting some of this and then other options that we have to uh, route somebody uh, with criminal charges through mental health court so they get the help they need. And as one cop told Jason, that standard is so wrong on so many levels, it makes it open season on law enforcement officers. It's infuriating. We have let the criminals run the asylum. And I'm, I mean that, literally. We are letting the criminals run the asylum. And more and more, our entire region does look like a big, fat, loony bin. And we're letting the criminals have their say, have the run of the streets, be able to assault cops and not get charged with anything. It's unbelievable. And people wonder why things are getting much, much, much worse. It's because we have elected officials who encourage all of this behavior. Finally, in the big lead. The Big Lead, Dory Monson Show exclusive. If you weren't listening at noon today, this was also from a listener tip. This is a, a, your tax dollars at work. Tomorrow at Highline Community College, they're having an equity development institute. And I've talked often about this great push for diversity. That's the word, that's the buzzword that every politician on the left uses. We're all about diversity, but it's not about diversity. It's about dividing people into little factions. So anyway, the listener sent me the biographies for the presenters at this Equity Development Institute at Highline Community College tomorrow. Let me just read to you the bios because it's so funny. It's so bizarre to me because I do not judge people on skin color or ethnicity. I don't. I judge everybody on the content of their character. So here are the facilitators in the bio for this event tomorrow. Marlon Brown is a black man with equity and social justice specializing in leadership coaching on and on. Goes. Fran Partridge is a white woman with 20 years of racial equity experience. Naho Shioa is an Asian woman with over 20 years of professional experience working in blah, 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 blah. Abraham Rodriguez Hernandez self-identifies as a Latin X man. He has over 10 years in developing on and on. Sebastian Wilson, Seb, is a white man who was born and raised in Seattle. He received a Bachelor of Arts, blah, 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 blah. It's so weird that this is, you know, it's like if you get an email from anybody with the city of Seattle, any staffer for a city council member, uh, it gives their name in their you know signature line on their email, and then it says prefers he him pronouns. And here, all these developers, they the first line, black man, a white woman, an Asian woman. Um, aren't we supposed to just believe that everybody's about what's inside of them, and not their skin color? But no, on the left. I tell you what, if you can't divide people into these little warring factions, there is no Democrat Party, because that's all they're about right now, is dividing people into these squabbling, frictious, fractious elements. Uh, it's not about unity. It's not about equity. It's about dividing people. It's very weird. And it's your tax dollars at work, and that's the big lead this hour. The Big Lead on Cairo Radio. Going to check the news and then our awesome audio of the day coming up next.
This hour of the Dory Monson Show is brought to you by Aging Options Retirement Planning. A Dory Monson Show exclusive. Mike Patton had a bill that said if you get four DUIs in 15 years, 